Michael lightly sprayed some cologne on his wrist, then rubbed it against his neck. Not too much, he whispered to himself. He finally worked up the courage to ask Courtney for a date, and she'd invited him over for dinner. He was ecstatic and excited to get to know her. He wanted to be at his best. He finished buttoning his shirt, grabbed his keys, and left his apartment. Michael sent a text to Courtney, explaining that he just departed and would be there soon. She quickly texts back a picture of the sundress she was wearing. His eyes lit up while his car idled at the red light. His excitement was warded by the nervousness of meeting her parents. He made a stop at a flower store just off the main highway. The door jingled as he entered the shop. Exploring the aisles, he had no idea what would be an appropriate selection for the first date. Roses, he thought to himself. No, no, that's way too forward. He peers around as he steps over to the front desk to ask for some assistance. Hi there, ma'am. Do you have any recommendations for a first date? I'm meeting her parents and I'm a bit lost in here, Michael said. A sweet older woman came out from the back room, interrupting his inquiry with the clerk. Young man, I've got just the arrangement. She waddles out from behind the counter and disappears into a side pocket of the store. When she returned, she was holding two bouquets of tulips, one yellow and pink and the other white. Parrot tulips for your lovebird, she said. Michael and the clerk laughed and smiled at her as she handed him the arrangement. And the white ones, he asked. Oh, you can't forget these, sir, the old woman said. Lady tulips. Mama's gonna love these. That's a great idea. Michael didn't think about the brownie points with Courtney's parents. After purchasing the flowers and thanking the florist, he drove the rest of the way to Courtney's house. He pulled into her driveway and he noted their lovely home. Courtney was on the front porch kicking her feet back and forth as she sat in the swing. He got out of his car as she made her way down the steps, grabbing the flowers while he closed his door. She smiled so big when she saw the flowers, pacing towards him a bit faster as she stared. You look so handsome, she said, lifting the bouquet under her nose. Her parents emerged from the house while they made their way up the stairs. Michael gave the white tulips to her mom and shook her father's hand. A real gentleman, the dad barked out. They all smiled as he patted him on the back and welcomed him inside. Dinner should be ready soon, her mom called out. Courtney and Michael caught up on their recent happenings. She flicked on the TV as they conversated. After some time, they were both called to the dinner table. They walked into the other room, his hand guiding her back as they entered. I hope you like meatloaf, her mom said with a warm smile on her face. The spread looked amazing, and they all started chowing down. They make casual conversation about the usual boyfriend inquiries when there's a knock at the door. The father looks up, as if puzzled. Ah, crap. Today's Tuesday, isn't it? Her mother looks up. Excuse us for a moment. You too enjoy. I look toward the front door as her father answers it. He opens the door, and a man with a large crate that has holes drilled into the sides gives the father a document to sign for the shipping. He then opens a nearby closet and rolls out a dolly. He tips the crate upward and slides the dolly under, then wheels it into another room, his wife following closely behind him. The parents return long after Michael and Courtney finish eating. The father grabs some bottles of wine. Got anywhere to be, he smiles, his face still wet with sweat from moving the crate as he offers Michael a drink. As the day comes to an end, the parents get a bit too drunk and go upstairs to turn in for the night. Michael and Courtney watch movies on the couch, still finishing off the last bottle of wine. 
Courtney leans over and tells him how she enjoyed the night, that she could tell her parents really liked him. She dozes off minutes later while the movie plays on. Michael continues drinking, watching the movie as he reflects on the night. While the movie ends and fades into silence, he begins hearing a knocking sound. It wasn't a loud sound, but he feels the vibrations of it in his shoes. He looks around and gets up, making sure not to alarm Courtney. Michael paces over to the front room, looks out the window for anyone that might be trying to get in. After seeing that the porch is void of company, he stands still so he can better pinpoint the noise. The sounds lead him to a back room. He spots a door on the far side of the room, where the hard beating sounds were louder. Michael slowly opens the door, where the beating sounds ring out. It's the entrance to their basement. He lightly paces down the stairs, opens another door that still has locks on the outside. As the door slowly parted from the door frame, he sees many large cages, all empty. One of the cages has a massive bed sheet over it. He can hear the beating echo out from the walls of the basement. His heart pounding, he approaches the covered cage, pulls back the sheet, and jumps back in shock. There's a man screaming through his gag, bound by duct tape and chains to a steel hook inside of the cage. They lock eyes, and even though the man was gagged, Michael could still make out his cries for help. The terror on the bound man's eyes jumped as he looks over. Michael turns and sees Courtney with her mother and father smiling grimacingly in the doorway. Did you enjoy the meatloaf? The father says while revealing a machete. Yeah. 